For more on that, let's cross to Amanda in the studio. Thanks, Nick. Scientists, politicians and campaigners have gathered in their thousands in the Spanish capital for those climate talks. Whilst around the world, people have been holding rallies to draw attention to a planet in crisis and to hold decision makers to account. Teenage activist Greta Thunberg joined a mass protest in Madrid. We are in the middle of a climate and ecological emergency. And we need to start treating this crisis like a crisis. And we need to step out of our comfort zones. And that is what we are doing right now. We are stepping out of our comfort zones, telling the people in power that they must take their responsibility and protect future and present generations. Well, back in the conference hall in Madrid, there are a number of critical and complex issues on the agenda. Here are some of the big ones. First, participants have to settle the rules for carbon trading, how to make polluters pay and reward those cutting back. Then there's climate finance. Developed nations are falling short of a hundred billion dollar a year target by 2020 to help poorer nations adapt and develop in a planet friendly way. And then there's the push led by the head of the UN, Antonio Guterres, to persuade world leaders to commit to tougher climate pledges. He described the commitments made so far as utterly inadequate. We need a rapid and deep change in the way we do business, how we generate power, how we build cities, how we move and how we feed the world. If we don't urgently change our way of life, we jeopardize life itself. The top four emitting countries account for 56% of global greenhouse gas emissions. India comes in fourth place with 7%. Now, it is working to boost its renewable power, but with nearly half its electricity dependent on coal and a rapidly growing economy, emissions are likely to keep rising. More encouraging news from the European Union and its 28 member states. It accounts for 9% of global emissions, but it's committed to reduce that by at least 40% from 1990 levels by 2030. The US is the second largest emitter, with just over 13% of the global emissions, but its pledges, if it meets them, are deemed too low. And finally, to China, the world's top emitter. It's been investing in renewable power for decades, but 85% of its primary energy still comes from fossil fuels, and most of that is coal. With a surging economy, carbon emissions are on the rise. Rob Matheson has more from Beijing. 